So yeah, we're going to be talking about a lot of direct stuff today. But before we do, I just want to tell you guys, I really loved what you guys put in the comments in the last video. A lot of you guys' game, that one game you wanted to see in the direct was pretty badass. Uh, uh, so many really great suggestions. So what I want you to do today is I want you to go down in the comments and tell me what is your favorite game that has dropped on Nintendo Switch and why. I'm very curious to see the wide breadth of games you guys play. Also, if you end up enjoying today's video, I'd appreciate it if you like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, and hey, let's just dive right in. All right, today we're going to be talking about how this damn Nintendo Direct, this upcoming Direct, is going to end up being maybe not just exactly what the video game doctors have ordered, but honestly, could end up being one of the greatest Nintendo Directs of all time. And man, we, we got to start off by just talking about, well, that we're getting a Direct at all, right? Nintendo's Shintaro Furukawa confirmed that we are going to end up getting a Nintendo Direct at some point in June. So, that is fantastic. We got about six days or so possible, really probably only five days left on the June calendar that a direct could happen on. And knowing my luck, it's probably going to end up being on the 20th. Now, right now, if you just want to pay attention to the rumor sphere, there was a leaked Among Us update that's supposed to shadow drop. This is a real thing. It was literally on the official website. So we don't have to rely on like insiders or leakers or anything for this. This just accidentally leaked out by the literal people behind Among Us. So there's a shadow drop update happening, or at least planned to happen originally, on June 18th. And yes, they have done Among Us updates in Nintendo Directs in the past. They announced a new map, as an example, back in the Nintendo Direct, all the way back in September of 2023. So yes, that is widely believed at the moment to be a possible day for it. And that is one of the five available dates for Nintendo Direct. But because I'm going on vacation and going to be traveling on June 20th for that. That's probably, <laughs> knowing my luck, when the Direct will actually be again because, hey, uh, that's the one day I can't cover anything or at least can't cover anything live. You know, maybe I'll, I'll make a video about it later in the day or at night, but do a live stream. I don't know. It's whatever. I'm on vacation, so we'll see what happens. But we need to talk about the Direct itself and what's going to be in it. And yes, I know there's kind of a big uh, thing out there right now when we're talking about this because some of the stuff I'm going to bring up uh, was mentioned by a now defunct leaker in Midori. We'll talk about some of that stuff uh, towards the end of the video. For now, I want to focus in on this Direct and how it could end up being really amazing. And that starts with obviously some third-party stuff. Yes, I do expect Among Us to be in there. If not Among Us, Fortnite, one of those two games, uh, they appear in a lot of different Directs. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some sort of update in there. And sure, you're going to have your slew. There's going to be a few indie titles. You're going to see probably the Dragon Quest 1 through 3 2D HD. This stuff actually actually technically leaked on their official website back on April 24th. So we don't even need to rely on any insider for that. It just is something that we expect and should be coming. And Jason Schreier uh, recently put out there that, yeah, the Final Fantasy Tactics remake remaster thing is happening. Uh, and he's obviously very reliable and not just like your normal average leaker out there. He's an, a real journalist with a track record and a face and a voice and everything in between. So uh, that is something that I do think we could possibly see in this Direct and would be a really nice addition to the Nintendo Direct. But when we talk about Nintendo Directs, it's not necessarily those third-party announcements that get us excited. Some of them do, right? There's some third-party announcements, especially when they're shocking and unexpected, like the Doom you know, 2016 coming to Switch back in 2017, that impossible port at the time. That felt really surprising considering that Nintendo hadn't been getting third-party support like that for a while. But that, those kind of games aren't as surprising now. Like Civilization VII is coming to Nintendo Switch. I wouldn't be shocked if there's a possible gameplay debut for Civilization VII in this direct so yeah that's something that i kind of ex expect at this point any big third-party games been confirmed i wouldn't you know see lego horizons right the horizons lego game we could end up seeing that again on a direct how crazy would it be to see a sony ip crossover in a nintendo direct when nintendo won't let their ip crossovers on any other platform i think that's pretty fascinating if that does appear in the direct but that's all sort of like expected things known quantities right like if we see luigi's mansion 2 hd that's not going to be like a big shocker or if we see the nintendo world championships game that comes out july 18th again not really a big shocker like those are kind of the expected norms but 
this direct could end up being really big for a few reasons. And I think the number one reason we have to look towards is Nintendo's ambitious goal of wanting to sell 13 and a half million Nintendo Switches this fiscal year. And you might go, well, how is that ambitious when that's actually less, you know, a, few, a two to three million less than last year? Well, one, Furukawa himself said that it's ambitious and he realized it's a target that they might not reach. But also because the Switch is declining in sales pretty much everywhere, even in Japan where the sales are still strong, it's still a good chunk behind the sales pace of last year now obviously we had tears of the kingdom pumping up sales you know this time of the year so that's a perfectly reasonable expectation when you don't have a game of that caliber out right now that yeah the sales are going to be less but they're really down massively across the entire world but they're still obviously doing better than xbox sorry xbox i, I don't really know what you guys can do at this point to turn that stuff around this generation but when I'm looking at the landscape for Nintendo, you look at this 13 and a half million mark and you realize the only way they're doing that is with a lot of big games. Now, Pokemon Legends ZA is rumored to be coming out outside of the current fiscal year. Obviously, that's just a rumor. We don't really know 100% for sure when Pokemon Legends ZA is going to come out. Maybe it ends up still landing in this fiscal year, and that could help boost some sales in the fourth quarter of Nintendo's fiscal year. But that's not going to be enough, I think, to get us to that finish line. So to me, there clearly needs to be a very strong second half slate of games, and I think we're going to be shocked at the ones that there are. Now, let's think about some of the stuff that have been heavily rumored for quite a long time. We have the F-Zero GX remaster, right? That's been rumor for a long time not just for me for there's, there's other people out there who have been saying that that thing's been done for a while ready to go uh nate the hate recently reaffirmed that yeah the fire emblem remake like that's been done for a bit but nintendo just sits on games doesn't know when it's coming out that could be something slated in the second half of this year. Fire Emblem does tend to sell decently well. We don't know with F-Zero, but, you know, that's a thing. We totally expect something Zelda, right? Whether it's Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, uh, maybe Only Between Worlds comes back, maybe a brand new top-down Zelda. That could be very fascinating. I mean, you look at how well Link's Awakening sold. I mean, we could be talking about a 6 to 8 million seller there in a brand new top-down Zelda. We can't, can't really rule out that possibility for this year. That would obviously make the direct to me really hype if there's a brand new top-down Zelda. That's cool because it means we're still getting at least some form of traditional style Zelda, right? The dungeon crawling Zelda a lot of you guys grew up on. So I, I th that would just be cool just to know that that's still alive and well in some form and probably selling well enough to continue to exist in the future. Grezzo, I would guess, is probably the company that might be behind that one if it does exist. But it could be something else. It could be Oracle remakes. It could be whatever. You know, we don't really know. But they like to get something Zelda out almost every year. So it would feel kind of like, hey, that could help push some sales. That might be a nice little addition to the slate this year. But then you got to think of other things outside of that. And one game that I think makes a lot of sense, and they do tend to release like three of these every generation, would be a Mario Party game. Uh, even though like the last Mario Party game didn't sell as well as Super Mario Party, it still ended up selling you know 10 million plus units, which is a lot of units. There's, there, there's a really big fervor around that Mario Party franchise. That could honestly be a big holiday title for Nintendo, right? We're in a holiday where it doesn't appear that you have Pokemon or any big AAA hyped up Mario Zelda uh, huge game. That could be one of those games that just, hey, it's not something that maybe gets everyone excited and jumping out of chairs, but it just moves units. And that would be pretty big for Nintendo. And I know like my family loves playing the Mario Party games. So having another one, yeah, that was going to be a day one purchase in my house because we literally play Mario Party together as a family every week. So uh, that'll be really exciting uh, if that ends up being one of those games. Obviously, there's that big elephant in the room, right? Metro Prime 4 is a game that's been announced since 2017. Maybe done or almost done at this point. People wondering if it's going to be a cross-gen title. But what happens if it actually drops here in 2024 for Switch? That would be pretty hype for me. And, and you got to wonder if you're going to get those Metroid Prime 1 and 2 HDs shadow dropped or something in the same way that Pikmin 1 and 2 HD ended up getting shadow dropped last summer. So... I, I, those are some possibilities there. And honestly, if you just think about that stuff alone, you're already looking at a pretty hype direct. But then you consider some of the other stuff, like the new Donkey Kong game that's been rumored for quite some time. What if that is a second half of this year game? You know, that to me would obviously be a very hyped experience. And when you start to combine all of these things together, if you think about prior Nintendo Directs, if all of this stuff that I just mentioned is in this direct, that ends up being one of the best Nintendo Directs we've ever had. 
And I'm not kidding. There might be other directs where you preferred like that game announcement. You know, maybe you were more into the Metroid Dread announcement, or you know, you were more into to, to when they they said Metroid Prime Four back in 2017 at E3, or more into that 2004 Twilight Princess stuff. I understand. Like there might be other individual game announcements you were more hyped at. Like for me, this generation, the 2019 announcement of the what eventually became Tears of the Kingdom, that was just what an amazing moment. But in terms of like just breadth of quality of games from start to finish, if this is what they're providing and there'll probably be a couple surprises in there we're not expecting, that would end up making this to me one of the best Nintendo Directs and honestly could help Nintendo achieve that stated sales goal of 13 and a half million. Remember, when Furukawa put that out there, he does that knowing what the slate already is. He knew when he said 13 and a half million what games Nintendo was releasing this year. And so we'll just have to wait and see what happens on that front. Some of these games could be early 2025 as well. I know the director is supposed to be focused on the second half of 2024, but that's always focused on. There's always a couple games that are beyond that, and that's where you can start to get even more hype being built for Switch to continue to get good games heading into 2025. Now, setting all this aside and how amazing that director would be, we also have to address this elephant in the room. And look, we're going to talk about this in depth on... Uh, a live stream tonight because there was a breaking thing that happened right while we were starting the podcast last night uh, with a leaker that we have called on this channel as reliable as Pioro because they were. Uh, we've had this happen one other time. Uh, Samus Hunter was also extremely reliable for a bit, uh, but that was long before most of the internet realized that family boards existed and it turned out Samus Hunter was just stealing all of her information off family boards and never was a source for anything. And once that information dried up, she just made up a bunch of stuff, got busted. Whoever runs a Silex Hunter account basically destroyed her and she vanished. And sure, that's fine. People do things for fake clout all the time. But we had this Midori situation pop up last night where Midori isn't who Midori claimed to be, which was like a Japanese woman uh, and, you know, had sources inside Sega and Atlas and eventually somehow ended up getting sources. We talked in the past, all it could make sense if she had sources there. Sega and Atlas work with Nintendo. They also work with Square Enix. Maybe through the grapevine, she started getting more and more contacts. It could kind of make some sense. Turned out that's not really what was going on. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to, you know, put out the guy's name and all that. It's already out. There's all public information. But turned out the Midori just isn't who they claim to be. They're a former person who's been banned at a lot of places for putting out fake leaks, kind of like Zippo level fake leaks. And uh person is really obsessive over certain things and tried to break into Sega at one point and got arrested. True story. Uh, and this document that he got his hands on, he actually got it from somebody else. And he used this document that had a whole bunch of Sega and Atlas um, meetings and stuff from 2023 and used that to start the leak fest. And then with this alternate persona, use that to gain access to other insiders, like legit insiders that know stuff and trade that information to get other information on Nintendo and Square Enix. Well, but that person wasn't supposed to put that stuff out there. And then the person did put that stuff out there, which started the whole rabbit hole of people digging into Midori and trying to figure out who the hell this person is because they were not behaving in the way the most insiders do. It was very clear that it was just all about clout and there was potential grooming accusations and all this other stuff that I don't really want to get into. But the point is, I bring this up because in the last video that I made, you know, I was defending Midori a little bit on the whole people contacting friends and potentially trying to dox uh, her and all that. And that's because, you know, we only had one side of the story. And it's a lesson to me, of course, that in situations like that, you know, maybe don't comment directly on that specific stuff until you have both sides of the coin. I still stand by a lot of the things I say about harassment and, you know, I, whoever this person is, I, I know who they are. I, I, not, I don't want you guys going after and attacking or whatever. The guy's going to be dealing with enough shit because of what he did being kind of a shitty person. But I'm just going to sit back and one, uh, I still feel strongly about not attacking people and not going after them, regardless of the stupid shit that they do. Uh, they got to deal with the consequences of that stupid shit. We don't need to add to the pylons. But more than that, we're obviously not going to cover anything from Midori anymore. And it's not just, you know, for our purposes, we just care that the leaks and the leaks are accurate. But I, I want to note a couple of things that I learned along the way. And I've talked now to several people behind the scenes. Midori doesn't have any more information. This guy, Mystic Distance or whatever, does not have any more information. They have, are completely out of their Sega and Atlas information. It's all been exhausted. And all the other stuff they had for Nintendo and Square Enix came from other legit insiders. And that information was never supposed to be posted publicly. 
Uh, and those people aren't talking to the person anymore either. So basically they're cut off from information because they never had their own sources. And because of that, there's no reason if that person does continue to go out and leak things to actually believe that person has access to anything because we now have the full paper trail on how this person had the information and how they'll never get this information again at this point. So, uh, it, look, that doesn't mean, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about all the, you know, the Dragon Quest 1, th 1 to 3 8, 2D HD thing, look, we already had a legit leak from the website back in April of 2024. Don't need Midori to believe that stuff. Um, you know, it being in the direct, yeah. Heard that from, I keep saying she, it's a he. Uh, heard that from another super reliable insider behind the scenes. All this information that we cover from Midori is probably pretty legit. Uh, so if you're worried about being misled, you weren't. But uh, I do think it's just important that you guys know that I am not going to be covering any more stuff from Midori moving forward. And I want you guys to know that if you happen to know any behind the scenes knowledge on any other leaker we ever cover here, whether it's Piora or Nate the Hate or anybody else, and you happen to know some stuff, you can always reach out to my DMs. I've opened DMs on X, or you can email me, Nathan at NintendoPrime.net. I will keep everything private. I don't want to put anything out there you don't want me to put out there. I also don't want to reveal anything from you. What I want to do is still cover information. I love covering information. I love covering leaks. It's a lot of fun. But I also don't want to be promoting bad faith actors. And if I'm aware of these sort of things, as people were aware, apparently, of Midori this entire time but didn't say anything publicly, it would have been nice to know privately because I could have found a way to cover the leaks without um, building up the person who was putting the information out there. There are certain ways to handle those situations where you're still covering the information while not um, elevating somebody who doesn't deserve it. Um, I don't mind if someone's got developer contacts and the developers give them information and tell them they can put stuff out there. That seems to be how Nate the Hate does it. That is totally fine. Uh, but I, I do have a problem with people that are stealing information um, for clout-based reasons and then bad faith acting and lying to everyone. The, the, the amount of lies that we're told along the way here is, is, is pretty staggering. So we're just going to leave it at that. You guys are awesome. Uh, I hope you didn't spend a lot of time down in the comments talking about this because I don't really think it's worth uh, having a whole lot of discussion at this point. We will, all, however, because of you know how much we covered this person, we'll talk about it openly tonight on the podcast if you guys want to come and tune in. That is perfectly fine. Uh, beyond all of that, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and week, and we'll catch you in the next video.